Welcome to race 23 of the MLNCS season. Just a few races left. I'm joined by Cater Johns, J. Rod Holmes, and Nico Nico Nee. You guys ready for this race? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Smells like bitch in here. Of course it does. It always smells like bitch when you're around. Let's go trackside for the command. <laughs> Cars rolling off and oh my god, they're trying to run us over already. Oh god, this is gonna oh, be fuck. this is gonna be quite the race, isn't it? While we get yeah. while we get this sorted out, let's take a look at your starting lineup. On pole is Caleb Marinelli for the second week in a row. To his outside is Justin Ritchie. Tanner Campos and Patrick Roden make up row two. Jared Holmes, Baron Poole, Dylan Jones, Gavin Grant, Seabass, Marcus Wong finish out the top ten. Oh man, my pick, my pick is the 29 of Marcus Wong. He'll get it done. He'll get it done. Let's take a done let's take a look at your Chase Outlook. You see Tanner there, way above the cut line. A couple guys though, pretty close. Take a look at your clinch scenarios as well. Sammy can clinch with any repeat winner. Tanner Campos, Jared Holmes, and Greg Servia all clinch with their next win. And Tanner can actually clinch anyway if he gains 41 spots on 16. Yeah, Tanner. Oh, what are we doing here? Oh my god. A little bit of a staggered restart. I think these guys oh. are pretty upset about how tame they were at Pocono. They didn't really take advantage of anything, so they're already getting it in. Oh, oh. Wide action, wide action. oh Carter just oh, went off track back there. What the hell is oh. that all about? Oh, what the fuck is happening here, Mikey? Oh no. Still three wide. Oh no, and <laughs> the pace car pulled off? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this is bad. This is real bad. Here we go. Oh no. They're already four wide as we take the green flag. Oh my god. Caleb leads them up into turn one. Here they go. They're going to bunch up in the field. Dylan Jones in a barren pool. And a frown goes like half the field. Roberto oh, Crown is around. Are you kidding? GD GDF and Bregler is around. A lot of cars. A lot of mix-up, a lot of damage. Nick Nelson, JDF, and Bregler, the real losers, as they get out of turn two. Into the S's now. Caleb Marinelli is still leading. Oh, wait, no, Tanner Campos is in the lead now. Caleb back to second. Patrick Gordon falling. Tanner with a little bit of a lead, about a car length over Caleb. Through the S's still. <sighs> still going through. Jared's trying to fight up for fourth. Head into the sharp hairpin here, whatever this is. Come up here. I was a bit early on taking that speaking part. Sorry, Raven. But We're good. meanwhile, um, the sharp hairpin, Tanner continues to lead. And, yeah, that start was crazy, guys. And if these fans have wanted a shit show for a while, well, ladies and gentlemen, here you are. Tanner Campos continues to lead them. As they go down this long straightaway here with Justin Ricci, or rather, uh, Caleb Marinelli and tells they head into the corner, which is turn 12. 
Yeah. Here comes Justin Ritchie uh, trying to make a move on Patrick Roden. But he didn't get it. Tanner Campus leads. He needs a win here. He's been so close so many times. Just lots and lots of struggler. And Caleb Marinelli has a very hard streak because he's going to try to run down Tanner Campos. Um, so, okay. Patrick Roden in third. Justin Ritchie fourth. Jared Holmes in top five. God dang it. Um. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> at back up into turn 20. Tanner Campos is going to lead them back to the caution flag with Kayla Marinelli in tow. Behind them is Patrick Roden didn't take the third position. Man, I thought they were going to get crazy on that restart. I did not think they were going to do that. Holy yeah. crap. That shook up yeah, the that shook up on. the that shook up the top ten quite a bit too. Oh yeah. I'll say. That was a wreck on turn one. Lap one. Probably gonna be a crazy race. Oh yeah, I mean fanning out three or four oh, wagon going into a hairpin is the smartest idea. See a car's in the back. Raven Dagan is in the back. I don't know how he got involved. Jonathan Martin's got some damage. Elon Solberg apparently made it through. That sucks. <laughs> Kyler Scott with some damage. <laughs> Benjamin Deloney was involved pretty hard. We're going to take a look at what happened. It starts around here, racing for what looks like the seventh position. Yeah, and they're coming up this hill here in the turn one. They're like six wide back there, and... <laughs> Obviously, that's not going to work. Dylan Jones into the, gets into Barn uh, Pool. Oh, they all the shut. Yeah. Flirting. Once they shuffle to the right side of the track, mayhem and seed. Just trying to get. JD. Looks like they were just trying to get the best angle. Yeah. God damn it. Fan favorite, Roberto Crown Jr. involved. <laughs> oh whoa oh, Ryan, Gregory. Ryan Gregory just about <laughs> killed JD right there oh yeah lots of torn up race cars they're still These wrecking are pretty big idiots not gonna lie they are literally it's not learning that's you see Raven oh, just spinning Raven Dagan spinning in the background yeah oh, these dollars should never learn like 24 races into the season, you'd think they at least have a little bit of more smarts than going into the season, but that is not the case. No, I'm trying to get dumber as each race passes by. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there were three wrecks in there. Oh my, oh my god. Four. Sammy spun somebody. Okay, so we should assume that this next restart will have like three different wrecks as well. Yeah, it wouldn't be Probably. Probably. Here's Tyler Scott. Last week's winner, Brandon Allen, got a piece of that, too. It's nowhere to go. They were going pretty slow, though, so not a lot of damage from that wreck. Ooh, Dontavious is nowhere to go. I think we blame Dontavious yet on that. <laughs> He'll be the fall, man. Yeah. Benjamin Deloney here. What do we blame on Carter? Yeah, Ooh, I mean, everyone's like... bunched up. There's nowhere to really go once that happens. Now nah, Carter should give it room. Carter sucks. Yeah, what a yeah. big loser. Here's, Carter, yeah. here's what, what happened with head. Sammy. Oh, oh, she spun the two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh um, there, cowboy. I don't know what that's all about. I I don't know if Sammy having any particular problem with the two of Zach Stern. But apparently she does. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> <We're ca> <laughs> 
That's class A comedy right there. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> one to go. One, one to go. <laughs> Tanner is out front, and they're already doing that stupid thing again where they try to go too wide. What kind of fucking restart is this? What? Caleb Baranelli's gonna get some payback on Tanner. Caleb wants. I think. Kale wants to be the second driver to win three races this season. A lot of different, a lot of different winners this season. A lot of multi-time winners, but only one three-time winner. Kind of crazy. Oh, are you trying to make a pass on Tanner in a turn twenty? Here they come, up that long front straightaway past the uh, F1 starting grid. Green flag in the air. And, Tan and Tanner with a great jump. He's going to get away with the lead. Block both lines. Tanner holds serve through turn one. Caleb's going to fall back to third. Maybe fourth. Here comes Jared Holmes in the 96. Looking for the spot. Tanner leads him down. Jared Holmes going to get the run off. Heading down to Raven. Tanner's still leading. Oh, I oh, there you go. Tanner's still leading. Patrick in second. Jared's up to third. As Caleb falls back. Uh, the 95 making the pass on the 12th. Bar and Pool is trying to peak, but it's not going to work. Still leading is Tanner. The gap has been closed a little bit by Patrick. 95 is still fighting with the 12. Oh, God, this is a third four with this. A little bit of damage there on 22, as you can see, but Tanner is still leading. Down to Jared. I'm not Jared. Oh. Go with it. <laughs> still trying to hold on here. Let me tell you, I believe someone forgot to turn down the AI bunching distance factor in the track I and I file, but that's... that's Besides the fact, but Patrick Grown in second, Jared Holmes in that fabulous space car up to third, oh, Marinelli, two time winner of the season, to fourth. They go down this long, long straightaway here. Really hard to commentate anything, honestly, down the straightaway. <laughs> Nothing really happens. But as they go down into turn 12, here's Jared. Oh, they bunched up there. Jared Holmes going to try to look at Patrick Roden, but he wasn't going to do it here as. They're going through the turns. Tanner hitting them turns perfectly so far this race. Patrick Rhodes slides up the track a little bit. Got a Jared Holmes throws blood in the water. What will we do going down to this turn? Nothing. But, yeah. This is a road course, boys. So, turns matter. Turns is where you get the most speed at. And that was a dumb statement, but we're heading down to Zach now, I believe. Jared continues to peak. Nothing quite there yet. Roden defensive line into turn 20. Here they come up the hill. Tanner's starting to pull away. And Jer Jared Holmes still hounding that 8 car. He, they're, they're pulling away from the 15 and the 95. As they go up the hill to complete lap 4 and start lap 5. Into turn 1. Tanner's away with the lead. Looking for his first win, as well as the points lead in the MLNCS. Alright, Tanner's still leading with Patrick falling behind. Tanner's trying to get up to Patrick, but it doesn't seem like he can do it. Tanner's about a five-car gap on the uh, second place of Patrick Roden. Jared needs a good race here today. Uh, as he's close to the cut line. This could help him a lot with the top three finish. Tanner still has a little bit of a gap, but Patrick's trying to chase him down, followed by Jared. Caleb fell back to fourth. We'll see if he can get back up there later in the race. Tanner with a, so, still a five-car gap. As they approach the hairpin now for the third time under green flag conditions, so let's see how they navigate it. It's like Jared, well, he had a pretty good hairpin, but Patrick Rowan just that far ahead gets that launch off relative to the 96, so he's gonna, uh, Jared's going to have to find a passing zone here to get around the aid of Patrick Roden. Um, but how about Tanner Campos? Sucked all season. His teammate Holmes has sucked all season. It's looking a, like a great shot for one of those two to win here today. Yes, it is, Cater. Yes, it is. Tanner Campos. 
Jared Holmes trying to make a move here. He's got a good run. He just cannot complete the pass. He gets up to the bumper almost, but just cannot complete the fucking pass, Mikey. Dylan Jones is starting to get a run on Caleb as both of them is caught the nine. I mean the eight and the uh, ninety-six here. Jared washed up the track a little bit there. Caleb almost off into the grass. We go through, like, I guess that's what you call an S in this country. But we're going to head down to Zach Stein. Tanner's not just looking for his first ever Miss League win. He's looking for the points lead in the MLNCS. Right now, he would he would have it over Gavin Grant as they run. And, Patrick, and he is looking to... Re and that would be huge momentum for the double zero and imagine not only taking that points lead but also winning this race what that would do for that team as he rounds turn one no no pressure at all from the eight the 96 charging hard as they enter turn two we're going to go down to nico as the field continues to run single file yeah zach speaking of the double zero that win would help him out a bunch to lock him into the playoffs he already has a big points gap but it'll just uh, lock his spot down. But he still leads over Patrick. Caleb's trying to pressure Jared, but to no avail. Maybe a little bit of revenge pented up from uh, Caleb getting booted off how he's mad motorsports. Jared might be regretting that decision now, but we'll see. What is this camera angle? I'm sorry, I can't... T I'll, I'll tell you what, Tanner's still leading, and off to Carter. Alright, so... Go is, in fact, correct. Tanner is leading this race. He's strung out here. Going to the hairpin. Oh, Ricci in sixth. Good run for that kid. Not good enough. Needs something magical. Hasn't gotten it lately. Oh. Um. Yeah. Uh, uh, Holmes in that sexy face car. <laughs> Just trying to catch the eight. Just trying to get around him and possibly a chance at the win himself. But he's falling back, it looks like. Yeah, as the 8 start to pull away from the 96 here, can the 8 go up there and try to make a move on the double zero? But there's like a, about a probably 8 car breakaway, it looks like. No. No. So, like, guys, I'm out of my element here. Normally, I don't really commentate these road courses. Normally, I'm in the sunny beaches of sunny weather, United States. Not here in Egypt or where the fuck place we're at today. But down to Zach. Jared lost a lot of ground, I believe, in turn one, but he's slowly starting to make that back up on the eight. As you see him dive into turn one, into turn twenty right there, game makes up a little more ground. It seems to have held even with the eight. Jared Holmes might have the long run card to go compete with the eight, but as we've seen, catching someone is one thing. Passing them is another. As you see here, Tanner continues to hold a pretty comfortable lead of about a second over the eight. Jared Holmes still in third. Kayla Marinelli's been able to pretty easily hold off the 95 as we exit turn two and head to Nico. Yeah, Tanner's still leading. He's been pretty dominant this whole race. As we come into the S's yet again for the seventh time, Jared's falling back a little bit and Caleb's catching up. They're really spaced out. Thinking of a hectic race we were going to have, but it's not really looking like it. We're just sitting here single file. Oh, trouble! No one goes around. Uh, Greg's still there. I mean, he's been slow. He's damaged. I don't think he's going to fight for the win. But we'll see if he can do anything. He's currently sitting in, uh, oh God, where is he? Ninth. Um, in front of his teammate, Kylie Greeter. Off to Carter. Alright, so as they head up this hill once again through this hairpin, no change at all. Eric Campos leads about a steady gap over Patrick Roden. Nothing more, nothing less. Barrett Holmes holding his own in third. You know, we know he wants to get around that eight. Here's Marco Suarez back just outside the top ten. That might be a bit further than outside the top ten, but somewhere behind Carter Jones. I bet he loves that view. So he head to Whoa. the 12th turn of this, of course. Yes, I bet you he does love that. As Alan Mooch gets right up to his bumper there. Finally on back there as well, some of the backpack here. I sure would like a backpack up here. It's hot up in this damn booth. But anyways, still no changes up front here. 
same top 10 as we had pretty much the whole race. Got to just drop it cool and collected here today as pit stop maybe coming up soon. Pretty sure. As we head on to Zach. Yeah, pit stops are going to be coming up. These cars can't go much further on fuel. And the question is, who's going to take the risk and try to dive on pit road early? The, the With how long this track is, even pitting one lap early is a huge advantage. You're going to gain a lot of time by doing that. So we're going to see if someone is willing to dive down to pit road first, or see if maybe Tanner wants to take wants to lead the charge and be the aggressor here. Yeah, speaking of fuel mileage, Zach, if you run out here, you're kind of screwed. It all depends on how far away you are from pit road, but the hills and everything that just screws you over if you run out. Tanner's still leading. I mean, hasn't been that eventful, but I'll tell you one thing. The Fords look pretty strong here. We have Chevy scattered throughout, maybe a Toyota, but the Dodgers are not looking that good at Coda today. But the Fords are looking mighty strong, so we'll see how that plays out later in the race. Down to Carter. Uh, I go back to what Nico said about running out of fuel on this long uh, road course. Um, remember what happened at Old Spice? Eddie Bregler had a, a, either ran out of fuel or had a problem. can't remember which one. But if you were to run out of fuel here, you might cause lots and lots of problems in some shape or form if you end up being in the middle of the racetrack while it happens. So we just need to hope and pray that doesn't happen or unless you're one of those fans that want to hope and pray for a caution i mean that's the thing too now we head into turn 12 eric campos continues to hold that second advantage over the eights of patrick Roden. yeah and if you're one of them fans that like sick crashes you know what you're not a true mncs fan but anyways caleb's starting to make a lot of ground on that 96 car He's inching closer to each lap, as well as Dylan Jones is inching closer to him. Looks like this, uh, these cars are going to try to bunch back up here. Ooh. Justin Richie peaked there on the 95 with Dylan Jones, but just didn't see it. Dylan Jones, I'm pretty sure, is going to be driving for Fireball Motorsports next season, if I'm not wrong. Definitely seen a lot out of Dylan Jones he's, since coming into the series at Daytona, I believe. But anyways, we're going to go head right back down to Zachary Stono. Tanner Campos da down through turn 20. Patrick Rodin is as well. I think we had a couple cars pit. Oh, Jared led the charge. Jared, first one to hit pit row. Justin Ricci and Baron Poole right behind him. This might be big for Jared. Pitting early, getting them four fresh tires. He's going to go around this whole course one time with a clean set. He might ha he might come away with the lead after this cycle of pit stops if, if everything plays out right. As we see here, Tanner still out out on the track, heading in the Raven. Yeah, definitely the fresh tires definitely help when catching up to the field. Uh, the slower tires, the more you go on them, the slower you'll go. So it definitely won't be helping these guys. So they might pit either this lap or next. I suppose this lap would be a smarter choice. But Tanner still is a about a point eight second gap over. Patrick, but it's kind of closing a little bit as Patrick's getting a small time through the S's, but we'll see what happens. Down to Cater. Oh man, if you're a fan that really wants Jared Holmes to win this race, you better be clenching them cheeks right now. This is probably the best shot he has. Being early, he's going to have a full lap on those fresh tires to make up the deficit on Rodin and Campos, who have not yet pitted yet. This is probably his best opportunity by far to win an MLNCS race, assuming there's not a caution. Even if there was a caution, that might play in his favor as well. So it's really a roll of the dice as to what happens here as we head into turn 12. J-Rod. Yes, I now know how Dale Walter feels on the, doing the 2001 Daytona 500 as his brother was going to victory. I am hoping, praying to God that my brother gets it done today. But I would be fine with Tanner winning. Tanner is a very deserving winner. But they're going to if they're, they're gonna have to decide to pit right now. This lap, as they come down this time, they are going to have to pit. As we head down to Zach, I think. T Tanner Campos. No. No. Oh, oh, you go. Um, uh, never mind. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter who gets this spot. Tanner Campos, I believe, has indicated that he is coming this time. Patrick Roden, I believe, should also. The rest of the field really should be in as well, as we'll see here. 
Let's watch what. Let's watch Tanner. He's coming down. So is the eight, the fifteen, the ninety-five, all close behind. There's our first dodge in the race. The seventeen to Sea Bass. Greg Serby is probably going to lose a ton of time repairing that damage. So forget about him. Uh, the the rest of the field is coming down here. See Kyler Scott, Zach Stern with a ton of damage somehow still in front of cars. I don't know how he sucks. Um, here we here we go. Let's see what some of these cars do. Tanner into his pit stall. I think he's going with just left side tires. Yeah, everyone's going with just left side tires here. We're gonna see how Tanner comes out. There's here he is. He's off of pit road. Let's see where Jared it is. There's Jared. There he is. He took the lead. Jared to the race lead. He got him on fresh tires. Jared has taken the lead away. Tanner Campos gonna charge hard. He's got the fresh tires now, heading down to Raven. Just, just barely taking the lead in that hairpin, but this will be a good battle between team owner Jared Holmes and teammate Tanner Campos. Both of them looking for their first win in the series, and this can help out Jared a ton. Tanner has a huge points lead, but this win will still help him a lot with momentum. Patrick Rowan has closed in on Tanner Campos a little bit. This will be a good three-car battle for the win here today. Barnpool, been looking pretty good. Oh, Caleb's falling back a lot after that pit cycle. We'll see what happens. Down to Cater. Oh my god, this is the most my heart's been racing in an MLNCS race I've ever watched in my life. This is absolute deja vu to the A-Rock at Watkins Glen. Jared trying to hold off Tanner, and as well as Tanner, we'll throw Patrick Roden into the equation as well. Three-man battle to see who grabs the checkers here at Circuit of the Americas. But right now, it looks like Jared Holtz is in a good spot. But let's see if those fresh left-side tires will pay dividends for Tanner Campos or Patrick Roden. Yes, Jared Holmes has had so much misfortune on him on CS. Tanner's had misfortune too. Hell, you can even throw Patrick Roden into the mix for having misfortune. He won the class, hasn't done much since then. Three drivers who desperately, desperately need a win, especially Jared and Patrick, up here battling for this win as we only got what? We're coming up to two to go here, uh, Coda, as we head down to Zachary Sterno. Two to go, indeed. Imagine this this win for Jared Holmes could be the catapult that he needs to actually start running like a championship contender. He's been one of the more consistent drivers of late. Went from below the cut line to 35 points above it. He's been pretty good lately, but this win would be huge. As you see here, a bunch of cars battling. There's Justin Ricci and Caden Bishop, two drivers who really needed this win, who really don't want to see Jared win this race. You see Gavin Grant here. He's losing a ton of ground to Tanner in the championship battle. That is, he needs to start making up spots now as well. Two to, up front, two to go with Jared up front. As we see here, Gavin Grant trying to hold off Justin Newman. Really, really just not been a good day for him so far. Caleb has fallen now to the 10th position, trying to get 9th back from KR. Not going to happen as they go down to Raven. Yeah, this would be a pretty good battle between those two. I haven't seen a lot of action today, but uh, these guys passing us by. KR is now in the top 10. He's been kind of sitting out there by himself today, but we'll see what happens. Justin Ricci's fallen back a lot. He was running up in the top 5 today, but after that pit cycle, he's fallen down. Caleb as well. KR has moved up a little bit, and here's Brandon Allen trying to chase down Justin Ricci. Down to Cater. Oh man, guys, this is starting to feel real for the 96 car. See Caleb here running further back somewhere. It's like 10th place behind KR. I tell you what, Caleb, after moving over to race gaze, it's been an absolute rocket. But not showing the typical road course speed he's shown lately here today at Coda as we head back to J Rock. Tanner Camp is starting to close in on the 96. Will Tanner crush the 96 dreams? Patrick Ronan just looking, looking for something to happen between them front two cars. And he will pounce like a monkey on a banana in the jungle of Mount Everest. And... <laughs> <laughs> but Tanner, Tanner just, this is really eerie from Real or 2A Rock. 
these top two cars running the same they were. And it's on another road course. Jared desperately out. Desperately clean, just clinging on his heart right now, probably, as we go down to Zach Stone. Jared's code browning right now. The last time he had an opportunity this good to win a race, Denver, he crashed out. Now, he comes to the white flag. One lap to go. He's got 20 turns. He has to make 20 turns perfectly to keep this race win in his bat in his belt. Barn pool in fourth, not a factor. These three, not a factor. You see the top 10 fly by here. Okay. Justin Ricci in on the in the 11th position. Brandon Allen up to 12th. Ricci really needs to get around Caleb here and start making up points. As we see here, Justin Newman racing for 15th. We're gonna go down to Nico. I'm trying to look at this leaders battle. I don't want to look back at here, lose guys. I'm trying to see if Jared Holmes can bring home this win today, and if Tanner Campos Campos can probably get one too. A little bit of a gap between them forming. Tanner's finished second countless times. Turning in the new Chase Elliott. Trying to chase down Jared. We'll see what happens. Down to Cater. Oh, man. This has been Jared's best week of his life. Got a new Xbox. Got a new game. NASCAR he 4 Been playing with his buddies. Now he travels to, to Texas, I think, is where this is at. He is leading in the MLNCS. He's trying to get his first ever MLNCS win. Tanner in tow. Looks like he is not gaining at all. And Jared Holmes is starting to look at this very real right now for clinching his first ever win in the Cup Series. As we head down to J-Rod, who I'm sure is crapping himself. Uh, I, I've known Jared years, years. He's my older brother. And all he's done his entire life has wanted to be a NASCAR MLNCS winner. And it looks like he's going to get it today. He turns 21 years old next week, next next Sunday. And what what a birthday it would be for this young man if he got it done here today at Coda. As we head down the next turn. Through the, fi <laughs> through the final set of turns. Jared Holmes. Tanner goes wide. The eight's coming up. Not close enough to make a move, though. Tanner trying anything he can to oh really get to... The 96. Oh Jared goes wide, but Tanner goes wide as well. Back up into turn 20. Here comes Jared. Dive, Tanner dives in, and the crowd, the crowd roars. They're going to see it for the first time. Jared Holmes win in the Miller Lite Cup Series. You got him. You got him. Have, have you ever. Woo. It's Jared. funny. Jared. Oh. oh. Oh no. Oh no. He's dead. He's gotta be okay though. <laughs> so I hope I hope Jared's okay. Oh no, Jared Holmes. This is Dignity Burnout. This is Joey's in court. Oh wow. That I th I think he was planning on burning it out too, but just didn't realize the cars aren't that durable. <laughs> what a day! Oh man, what a race! We're gonna take a look at results, thanks to Jared. J-Rod, Nico, and Cater, here are your results. Behold the king! The king of kings! On your knees, dog! Unable to tell The king took 
Their screams echo loud in the place of their death Ripped open they die with their final breath They hail the king The king of kings 